When we had last left this man, whose name is probably Harry, he and Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi finally went to the back of the Whirling in Rags, and with an ampule of ammonia in hand, did they finally investigate all that there was to find about the hanged man. From head to toe did they search the rope, the tattoos, and the very interesting boots. But perhaps the most interesting thing of all with the body was that to Harry, the body spoke. And after such wild revelations, did they finally arrive at one more task, how to get the body down. It was a question for the ages, but a question that would have to wait for an answer. For not long after, did Harry finally look into the final back rear compartment of his clipboard ledger, and inside did he find several mementos from a life seemingly long gone, but perhaps most notably was a letter from what seemed to be a loved one. Words so sweet, they stung, and they stung so hard that Harry fainted and collapsed. This is Disco Elysium. Welcome back. Oh goodness, let's head on over to Plysance's place and bash down the door, huh? After such a, a heart-wrenching, seemingly uh, heart-wrenching and terrible ass time, let's bust down a fucking door. Oh shit, there is a person out here. Who is this? You were not here before. Hello, who are you? Oh look, I have a little thought, a psyche thought. It takes willpower to even read the author's name. Jean Kaus from Iguania. <laughs> oh my, this person says, who are you? <laughs> Working class woman is her name. <laughs> you see a sturdy woman humming to herself. She seems to be browsing books. A good one? Hello. No ceremonies, just hello. Leave her be. Oh, we can't just leave her be. A good one? Point at the book. Yes, hello. She nods, her attention fully focused on reading. Who are you? Me? No one. I'm just a working class woman. She looks up briefly. Empathy, easy success. She doesn't really want to be disturbed that much. Let's disturb her. What are you doing? Looking for something to read. What is that accent? Is that is that French? Yeah, it must be. It's like a very gravelly French. Or, yeah, English-French accent. Or would it be French-English accent? Yeah, it would be a French accent in English, right? <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> she reverts her attention to a worn-out paperback. Phenomenal. Good, good. Nod. I'm a policeman. <laughs> Let's say that to her. I know you are. Good, then. Do you need the help of a policeman? Leave. Do you need the help of a policeman? What with? <laughs> she tries hard to focus on the book stand. Maybe your husband is missing. Watch her browse books. That's all for the moment. I'll let you read. I don't know what's weirder to do. Actually entertain her with the question of maybe your husband is missing? Or just silently watch her after she asks us a question? <laughs> maybe your husband is missing? My husband? No, he is not. <laughs> so where could he be? Okay, thanks. Maybe she doesn't even have a husband. Let's see. So where could he be? I don't... <laughs> I don't know. At home? Out drinking with his friends? Working. Where is this going, officer? So what I'm hearing is, you don't really know where your husband is. Right, got it, thanks. Oh, this sounds like a mystery. So what I'm hearing is, you don't really know where your husband is. Like he's missing. Yes, but... She looks around and takes a deep breath, a little annoyed. I don't really need to know where my husband is. Not all the time. Wouldn't you like to? No. <laughs> she looks you straight in the eye. Her right foot is tapping nervously. I can totally help you find your missing husband. <laughs> Suit yourself, then. I don't really care if your husband is missing. Maybe you're right. Maybe he isn't missing indeed. 
<laughs> Let's keep pushing. I can totally help find your missing husband. Why are we still talking about this? I haven't lost my husband. <laughs> Empathy medium success. She has, though. The husband is totally lost. You should tell her it's okay. <laughs> Why is Empathy doing this? Wait, is it for real? <laughs> or is Empathy just as clueless as we are? <laughs> we can say to her, Hush, baby. <laughs> it's okay. Let go. It's okay. What? <laughs> It's all right not it's all right to not know where your husband is. Nothing shameful in that. No, I was talking to myself. I should stop. It's okay. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> There's nothing shameful in that. Who said anything about shame? Stop talking down to me. <laughs> she puts her foot down. My husband is not missing. <laughs> Inland Empire medium success. But he is. You can feel it. Or maybe it's something else then. Maybe your children are missing. Maybe your cockatoo is missing. Watch her browse books. Maybe your children are missing. No, absolutely not. I have no, I can't do her voice at all. Her words come out quick as gunshots. Okay, so where are they? Are you a policeman or a nanny? She, de she is definitely disturbed by now. Nanny, where are they? I police whatever I want. Where are they? <laughs> Let's see. No, I'm a nanny now. Where are they? They're not missing, sir. Electrochemistry easy success. You know where they are. They're at home. Smoking. Giving the ladder of vices a chance. Inland Empire challenging success. What if something horrible has happened? What if they're dead? That's the bad vibe you got before. They're at home, right? Smoking cigarettes. What if something awful has happened? What if they're in the sewers? Okay, great. Just making sure. What if they're in the sewers? What? That's just... My daughters are perfectly fine. They're with their friends down in Jamrock. There's nothing to worry about. Empathy challenging success. She's getting upset. Her voice has risen as she tries to convince herself that her daughters are safe. <laughs> I like that even Empathy is like buying into this that there's something wrong. <laughs> they are almost grown up anyway. They, they're past the age they need me protecting them from everything now. I'm afraid the danger is now greater than ever. Tell me. How old are they? Maybe you're right. Maybe they aren't missing after all. Tell me something else. Oh, I'm afraid the danger is now greater than ever. Tell me, how old are they? My youngest girl, Jolie, is just shy of 16. Jenny is turning 18 next month. We shouldn't even be talking about them. And can you describe me their appearance? Any features that stand out? Something to make identifying a little easier. Why do you need to know this? <laughs> Have, <laughs> haven't I repeatedly told you they're not missing? They're in Jamrock, safe and well, at some stupid party. Electrochemistry medium success. Did someone say, party? You could use a party. Hunt it down. I could do with a party, a killer party, not a lame one. It's for the investigation. I'm trying to be professional. You're right. Let's not talk about your daughters. I don't know what got into me. Hmm. Let's tell her I could do with a party. <laughs> a killer party? What is it with you and pulp staples? My god, please. No more talk about my daughters. They're fine. She picks up a book and tries to concentrate. A flock of seabirds passes by. Hey, maybe your cockatoo is missing. I don't mean to disrespect you, sir, but you are being a bit of a cockatoo here. <laughs> For what it's worth, I agree. But cockatoos can't be stopped when they get like this. It's better to indulge him at this point. <laughs> Ma'am, I was asking about your cockatoo. Is it missing? What do you mean I'm being a cockatoo? What do you mean I'm being a cockatoo? 
Nothing. Go read up on them if you're so interested. There's a great book in the bookstore. Inland Empire, easy success. Maybe you should. What if the cockatoo is your astral captain? Or your heraldic bird? Actually, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Thanks for the tip. Get task. <laughs> to read up on the cockatoo? You're being sarcastic. Let's talk about something else. No, you know what? That's exactly what I'm going to do. That's a great idea. Thank you. New task. Find your heraldic bird. What the fuck? <laughs> Find your heraldic bird. The working class woman said that you're a bit of a cockatoo. What if it's true? Go <laughs> What if it's true? <laughs> Go read up on cockatoos in the bookstore. Maybe you'll discover something new about yourself as well. <laughs> you know, I gotta say, writing in video games and making video games funny when that's your main goal is to make a comedic game, it's very difficult. I feel like video games might be the most difficult um, artistic medium or at least among, okay, not, that's, that's a stretch. Among literature, film, and television, video games are probably the most difficult to convey humor, I think. Right? And maybe that's why this succeeds, is because it's also, like, it's, it's like a halvesies video game and literature, which makes it a bit easier to pull off. But nonetheless, I can't remember the last game that was this intentionally funny that I played. Maybe way back when I played um, Saints Row the Third, though I don't know how how well that held up, but at least back then that was that was pretty good. There were some funny moments in Portal Two, but I think that predates Saints Row the Third. I think, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Either way, good stuff. Go read up on cockatoos in the bookstore. Maybe you'll discover something new about yourself as well. Oh look. We can read about the victim's tattoos. You have a photo of the hanged man's tattoos. Maybe someone can decipher them, tell you what they mean. You should probably talk about two people. You should probably talk to about two people. What? Oh, you should probably talk to about two people about them for this. Okay, I see. Ask about tattoos possible meaning. Where's the rest of the armor? The hanged man's armor seems to be missing. Find out what happened to it. The kid throwing rocks at the corpse seems to be a good place to start. Ask him about the body first. Ask Kuno, the kid throwing rocks, what he knows. Shit, we never even did that. I got so distracted by cool shit everywhere. Alright, story of my life though. Alright. Let's see, find your heraldic bird. Let's watch her browse some books. Oh, she says, Wonderful, the store is open. Watch her browse. Her hands move over the book covers. The tips of her fingers look rough, stained with yellow. It seems like she has spent a lot of time at work, smoking. Electrochemistry, medium success. An array of neurons fires up with joy. Bummer a cigarette, lest it turn to pain. Do you smoke? No, I don't. I know for a fact that you smoke. All right, got it. Thanks. Gosh, this is so incredibly rude. But we are... Maybe it's not as rude coming from someone who looks like me. Look in the bottom left at my portrait. <laughs> I look like a fucking train wreck. I know for a fact that you smoke. She looks up, slightly startled. Why do you think that I smoke? It's the kind of place where everyone does. I suspect I may possess supernatural abilities. Your hands look like they belong to a heavy smoker. Oh, we should do that because of our electrochemistry telling us that. All right, your hands. It's not like yours look much better, she says while eyeing yours. Take a look at your hands. Just give me a cigarette, please. Let's take a look at our hands. Perception sight. She's right. Your hands look even worse than hers, with tiny cuts and gushes covering your skin like a spider web. Your fingertips have become an ugly shade of brown, 
Oh my god, when's the last time I washed my fucking hands? Just give me a cigarette, please. I already told you, I don't have any. Go bother someone else. Half light, medium success. She's lying. She's damn lying. She has smokes. Just give me your cigarettes, okay? Don't lie. Do you know where I could get a new pack? Okay, thanks. No problem. Move on. Do you know where I could get a new pack? From the kiosk? There's one near the harbor. It's a freet. You can look it up. Hmm. <laughs> Should we push her more? God, this is awful. <laughs> Fuck it. I want those smokes. Just give me your cigarettes, okay? Don't lie. Sorry, officer? She stares at you in disbelief. Okay, thanks. No problem. Move on. <laughs> she sighs. That's all for the moment. I'll let you read. The woman before you nods and returns to her reading. Well, just another day in uh, Ravishall. <laughs> Let's go on in here. Don't be afraid to say weird things. People are more forgiving to persons of power, like police officers. <laughs> Case in point. All right, great. Let's see, should we talk to Plaisance? I think so. Hello again, esteemed officer. And welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. Hey, Plaisance, I'm looking for a book about cockatoos. A book about cockatoos? There should be one upstairs. Right next to the shelf of biographies. All right. Great. Leave. Maybe we can ask the kid about cockatoos? Hi, Ace Detective. Are you here for more books? She smiles warmly. Nah, bye for now. See ya, Annette. Okay. Let's see. Should we go and buy the book before we bust down the fucking door? Hmm. Let's do a quick save as well. How much was the book again? Is this the bird shelf? Was all this shit? No, that's Dick Mullen. Where's the bird shit? Oh, here it is. Look, it's one book lit up. From A to Zreek! A guide to a well-behaved cockatoo. A sulfur-crested cockatoo sits on the cover, its beak slightly open. It looks as if the bird is calling out the book title. From A to Zreek! A guide to a well-behaved cockatoo. <laughs> Flip through the pages. Wow, so this book wouldn't have even appeared here. All of this, like, reading and shit, it wouldn't even be here if we hadn't pestered that poor woman about cockatoos and why I might be one. All right, let's flip through the pages. Turns out there are so many different cockatoo species and they all have behavioral problems. <laughs> that sounds about right, right? There's so many different kinds of characters that you can roll of this one man and every single version has some sort of fucked up problem. <laughs> what about this guide to cockatoos, storekeeper? Oh, it's a must-have if you own a cockatoo. I've heard they're quite capricious. Ooh, interfacing medium success. Or medium, 10. Steal the guide to cockatoos. Oh shit, should we steal it? I don't think we should. Maybe I should just buy it. I can afford it, right? And my interfacing is so low. Let's just buy it, because you know what? Already we're going to bust down our back door. I want to buy the guide to cockatoos. Item gained. From A to Zreek, a guide to cockatoos. Oh, a nature enthusiast. Good choice. I knew it was a good idea to keep that around. Great. Let's see. Yeah, a guide to cockatoos. There, there's some of them right there. A book about different cockatoo species and their behavioral problems. Perhaps it could also offer some insight into your own often problematic actions. The spectacular, major majestic cockatoo eyes you from the corner. Let's see. Find your heraldic bird. Wow, fuck me. Okay, well we bought the book. Let's bust down her fucking back door, huh? Let's do it, baby. Alright. Over here. 
We may need to invest a point in order to bust it down again, right? Let's see. Take a peek here. Break down the door. It is pain threshold. Okay. Do I have anything that grants me more pain threshold? I can't even remember at this point. Physical instrument? No. Okay, we'll have to invest a point then. Which I'm fine with. Alright. Let's level it up, baby. Boom. Alright. Quick save in case somehow it kills me really badly. But even if I fail it... Look, 83% chance. How could I possibly fail this? Warded door. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of little oddly shaped trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. Pain threshold challenging 12. Break down the door. Here we go, baby. Success. Oh, yes. Get a load of this, Kim. Ugh! Oh, it fucked me up. What? What? It still busted my ass. 5 XP gained exp- er, Yeah. Got 5 XP. <laughs> Pain threshold. Challenging success. You smash into the wood and see a small crack appear on the doorframe. It's going to take mo one more try to break through to the other side. But you've done it. The lieutenant stares at you as you stand there, silent and brooding. You're not thinking of trying again, are you? You know how many times I've tried? We are getting through this door. Smash into the door again, wordless. Smash into the door and shout, Fuck the system! Smash into the door and shout, Freeze, dirtbags! Smash into the door and shout, Hands up, now! Smash into the door and shout, Fuck, it hurts! Let's say that. <laughs> Here I go! Oh! <gasps> what the fuck will happen? Oh shit, it's a gym! What the fuck? Oh, the lieutenant wants to speak. Where are you, lieutenant? Is that your head right there? Yeah. Holy shit. What the fuck have we found? All right. Hey, Lieutenant, what's up? What is this place? The Lieutenant stares at the dusty training equipment. It's an adventure. It's the netherworld beyond the veil. Looks like a gym to me. Ugh, no idea, Kim, but my head hurts. My head hurts bad. I think this may be the Artemitrips Boxing Club for Young Athletics. Oh, right, from the, um... The- all the shit that we could have called up. Is this it? Let's say it, I think this has gained information here. I think you're right, he says. Though it looks like no one's been here in ages. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Don't forget to take it out of your bag before we move on. Inland Empire, easy success. An eerie feeling rises in your chest. What if there's a reason why no one's been here for ages? Let's just keep going. I'm sure it's just a regular abandoned house. Nothing mysterious here. What if there's a reason why no one's been here for ages? Yes, because it's closed. <laughs> no need to look for supernatural explanations. We're a banal one. A banal one will do. Now, let's move on, shall we? Alright, flashlight time. Alright, I guess we'll put it in our... In this hand. There we go. Cool. There's no tear in here, right? Okay. Sure. So let's, let's keep this equipped, because this will also give us Inland Empire, won't it? Yeah. Which is useful. Especially when we're investigating something that seems vaguely supernatural. Or supra-natural. Sand is dripping from a punch bag. Ooh, I love that. What's this? 
It's one of the balls. Shot put ball. Item gain shot put ball. A ball used for playing shot put. You feel like you should hold on to this and make good use of it. To sell such beautiful old school sports equipment would be a sin. Fuck. It's pretty valuable though. 450. All right. What's this shit? The poster says, CTS Fortis, the rest is worn off. Oh, look. A big dumbbell thing for big boys. Let's see, what's this thing? Worn out wall bars, they look unsafe. Can I pick this up and impress the lieutenant? A barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight, its weight plates. Physical instrument, trivial success. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. Inland Empire, medium success. Why does it feel so familiar? Is this familiar because I'm a weightlifter? No, it's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber. The squeaky sound of sneakers. Your bruised knee against the mat. And a whistle. Then the feeling is gone. Maybe when I was going under... When I was, like, doing cop training or whatever? Logic. Easy success. It's just a memory. Endurance. Easy success. A memory from another life. When you were young and fit. Whew, physical instrument. Legendary 14. Lift the barbell. 8%. Hang on, do I have anything that increases my physical instrument ability? Let's see. Tools. I <laughs> use the pry bar. <laughs> All right. Ooh, yeah, my tank top. There we go. Cool. Now I look like a fucking powerful man. Okay, let's lift it up. 17%, baby. <laughs> Fuck. All right, prepare to be amazed, Lieutenant. Here I go. Failed it. Oh, God. It hurt. <laughs> okay. Physical instrument, legendary failure. You manage to hoist it off the ground, but the barbell feels wobbly and dangerous. Your hands slick with sweat. Turns out you're no beast, just an old man with bad form. Fuck you, you stupid barbell! Seems I'm a little out of shape. Or maybe these gloves just suck. Whatever, weightlifting is for the intellectually impaired anyway. Say nothing. Fuck you, you stupid barbell! Oh shit, I lost morale. Because <laughs> I let it get to me. Weightlifting was never my favorite either. The lieutenant is obviously handling you. At the station gym, I mean. I prefer running. It clears your head. The lieutenant steps away from the barbell, letting you recover in peace. Great. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> I'm fucking trash. <laughs> Let's put this shirt back on. White satin shirt. Let's see. Anything else in this lower level? I don't think so. Let's head on up. Ooh, there's a sound emanating. Lieutenant, do you fucking hear that shit? There's some scary shit up here, Lieutenant. I can hear it. Why does it sound so eerie? The hallway is blocked by old window panes and debris. Dude, what the fuck is up here? The audio is building towards something. What is this occult looking weird shit? Wild animals stare at you in the dark, stuffed and mounted. 
Oh, creepy ass taxidermy. The creepy music is coming. Poor animals. No rest for their bodies after death. Oh my god, listen to this fucking creepy ass music. What is this X File shit? A large demijohn full of strange liquid. Dude, what the fuck am I about to find in this? Isn't this a side quest? This surely isn't part of the main quest in the game. Oh, creepy ass mannequins and shit. Airship rotors covered in spider webs. They remind you of blades. Holy shit, look at the light. Oh, that's incredible, dude. Thank God this isn't like a combat focus game, or otherwise I would be like really fucking on edge right now. <laughs> I mean, I already kind of am. Oh, look. What the fuck? There's some weird shit over there. Is that... is that D&D? What is this? A naked mannequin tor torso. A strange yellow color. What's in this? Money. My favorite. I think I j I've almost already recouped the cost of the cockatoo b book. Blue velvet. Soft to the touch. Moth-bitten. An int thought. Is this Emma's Atelier? Oh, yeah. <gasps> We're going to get to the one section where that weird mind shit was. Remember? The lady who we rang up and said, like, I've lost my mind, officer, or whatever the fuck. What the fuck is going to happen? More money. This music is fucking incredible. Music throughout the entire game has been incredible, though. That's nothing new. What's this? Mainframe. Oh, shit. This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off... has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. A radio computer, says the lieutenant, watching you circle around the machine. Just sitting here, without anyone in sight. He sounds surprised and a bit cautious. You think I should turn it on? Turn on the machine. Step away. You think I should turn it on? We have one of these down at the station, but I never really learned how to use it. Let's turn it on. Holy shit. Listen to this sci-fi ass noise. What the fuck? The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing virescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. Look inside the compartment. It's empty, like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. I wonder if we can repair this and use it to read some sort of device or whatever at some point. This is where the memory should go. The lieutenant notes, observing the machine. Ooh. That's a very interesting line in a game where our character has lost their memory. Press play. Nothing happens. Press, press play again. Nothing happens. Press print. Nothing happens. Leave. Yeah, we can totally use that for something. Look, more creepy, a taxidermy, a door? Scribbled across a notebook. Developers of the most advanced RPG in the universe. This is some RPG shit. What is this? Frequency fireplace. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly, and strangely ancient. Inland Empire challenging success. A diagram for summoning some time-forgotten being? The symbols seem very esoteric. What am I looking at? 
radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6, UKV 123.7, UKV 123.9. Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies for what? Can we plug these into Kim's shortwave? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system. Split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. So we're dealing with something medical here. This must be an elaborate piece of art. We're dealing with something medical? You think so? The web is comprised of radio stations. All lead back to one red heart, titled the Game Master Frequency. A note says, This one can listen in on any station at once? Half-Light, medium success. Looks like a surveillance program. Oh, they were probably just calling each other on, like, shortwave radios and stuff and playing, like, D&D &D not together in one place or whatever, or whatever their equivalent of D&D &D is. Wait, who's the Game Master? Someone very important. If it's a game, then who's playing? Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like. Empathy, medium success. All of this, gone. Left unrealized. Logic, easy success. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. My god. The lieutenant leans closer, his finger tracking the maddening rhizome. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. <laughs> Surely commentary on the development of this very game, I would imagine. <laughs> Being a studio with some, with clearly not, uh, a shitload of funding, right? <laughs> Why do you say that? The schedule. He nods at the calendar on the chalkboard, wiping his marker-stained fingers clean. I know doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. What else? Squint at the lines. Nothing. It's just lines on marble, an echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. And look, who is this elf man? Project Dread Board. Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard, covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes, like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. Inspect the drawings. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins, casting wax-based magic. Translucent welkins with organs shining under their skin, and even aether welkins, hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. Inland Empire, medium success. Who are all those creatures? Fantasies of a tortured, feverish mind? One of the Welkins, towering among the rest, appears to be different, however. Examine the Welkin. This is important. It's Varahamira, a high Welkin. His face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly... A Welkin supremacist! <laughs> the note says, All non-Welkin races will be purged! The Holder, the Dwyarge, the Humans, and even the Headless Men. All of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with Welkin! Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all! The lieutenant can't help but comment. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. 
Why would anyone spend so much time on this? <laughs> Who are these creatures? Who drew them? Are they real? I have so many questions. Whisper. One of them is a Welkin supremacist. <laughs> well, this has been educational. Let's move on from the Welkins. I think we can exhaust all of this. So let's start from the top. Why would anyone spend so much time on this? Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for a game. <laughs> Who are these creatures? What? Who drew them? Are they real? I have so many questions. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. One of them is a Welkin supremacist. Mm-hmm. Political commentary. That one has a great beard, too. The lieutenant nods at the Welkin's facial hair. Well, this has been educational. Let's move on from the Welkins. Just look at... Oh, this is him talking still. Just look at those details. So much effort. Empathy, medium success. And for what? All gone. Inspect the photos. The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms. Dead trees groaning under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried-up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. Encyclopedia Easy Success You see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers by boreal dwarge, yurts under the snow, great mammoth-like beasts of burden. Electrochemistry Easy Success Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way, like eggnog or morphine, a much-needed respite from our own world. Ooh, interesting. I like that electrochemistry actually reacted to that, huh? And in that way. A pinned postcard reads, The Heat Death Scenario, a desperate fight for geothermal energy, engulfs the world as Quiral becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. Inspect the schedule. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like sprint, daily minimi, and GPI span the marker-drawn grid. The grand scheme of production and money. Empathy challenging success. Everyone is constantly teetering on the edge of the abyss. An abyss of production. These squares look orderly, but beneath them is chaos, worry, pain. Pain threshold, challenging success. So much pain. Back pain, neck pain, headaches, carpal tunnel, chest pain. No gym membership can make up for working in this manner. Here's looking at you, CDPR. Keep reading. What happened? Step back and look at something else. Keep reading. What happened? As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. 5 XP. The lieutenant looks at the frigid ice field of nothingness and concludes, Looks like they didn't make it. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, See the prod schedule. Filament for details. Hmm. Probably for the machine here. Inspect the notes. The handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out. We're all untethered, and heat death of the universe. Shivers, medium success. Outside, a cold wind wraps the building in its bosom. Snowflakes in the wind. An old woman passes what the locals call the doomed commercial area. She tries hard not to look at the bookstore windows. It's unwise. Ooh. Leave. Huh. 
Let's talk to the lieutenant. Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? Looks like an undercover counterintelligence program. It's just a failed business. The only question is, what the hell were they making? No time, let's move on. I want to hear what he has to say. The only question is, what the hell were they making? Yes, that is the question. The lieutenant takes a step back, steepling his hands. Oh, do they not have video games yet in this world? Maybe not. Sounds, yeah, I think that about tracks, right? It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role-playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it. Make it work on radio computers. Esprit de corps, medium success. Utter madness, he thinks. As a compliment. Dude, he totally partook. How are they planning to do that? Has anyone ever done this before? And this was a role-playing game? What do you think happened to the company? Wow. Conclude. <laughs> How were they planning to do that? Through call-in stations, he nods at the fireplace. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game, as long as they have a two-way radio. Then there's the Game Master frequency, that listens in on the smaller call-in stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. Electrochemistry medium success. His fascination has swept aside the has swept aside other concerns for the moment. He's a little hooked. Has anyone ever done this before? Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Koningstein. You know, places with industry. Okay, so there are already automated games, just not here. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an inter isolary game before. We just don't have the technology. Right. So like, our equivalent of some sort of online multiplayer game or whatever. And this was a role-playing game. Indeed. Those Welkins are a dead giveaway. He points to the chalkboard. Role-playing people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the Wirfrau board game. With heat death thrown in. What do you think happened to the company? No idea. They stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard. Wow, conclude. Indeed, it's ambitious and untethered from reality. But the lieutenant tilts his head, thinking. They were insane if they thought they could do this. It was just a play to cheap money out of their investors' pockets. The world is cold and lonely. This would keep it company. Let's finish it. Holy shit, can we? I don't think we'll be it. Surely we can't. How much shit is in this game? Let's, fuck it, let's say it. The world is cold and lonely. This would keep it company. Let's finish it. A half smile breaks out on his face. It's too late for that, I'm afraid. He says, looking around the derelict room. The pipes howl, and a rat crosses the floor. Okay, he concludes. Let's keep moving. I'm very curious to select this door, right? But maybe we should hold off. Fuck, I don't know. What's over here? Ooh, it goes further up. What the hell mis- What the hell mysteries lurk within this weird-ass place? Oh shit. Well, you'll just have to tune in next time to find out, won't you, gentle viewer? <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> All right, when next we come back, we're going to continue investigating around this really weird and cool place behind the bookstore, where we have busted down into that building. Remember, it was boarded up from the other side. We tried to ring up all of them. One area happens to have someone inside. Someone who has seemingly lost their mind, just as I have. What will we discover? Who knows? Until next time, please take care of each other. <laughs>